Hello, I'm Dr. Bill Wyatt. I'm a general dentist who has practiced orthodontics only for the last 40 years. And uh, this is a second phase of expanding the lower cuspids. Uh, I'm a member of the American Orthodontic Society, and this is an organization that is dedicated to teaching general dentists and pedodontists orthodontics. So if you practice orthodontics or you are trying to practice in your office, uh, we hope that you will join the American Orthodox Society. It's a, an excellent uh, society which is has some excellent teachers that are teaching orthodontics. So. I'm going to finish this second phase. We have two more cases here to go through on expansion of the lower cuspids. And instead of taking lower anterior teeth out uh, to be able to line the, the four lower te anterior teeth up, we expand the cuspids. And this has been a no no. In the past, they did a lot of research that the cuspids would always go back to the original position, uh, which we actually don't believe this is a fact. In fact, we know it doesn't. I'm going to go through some cases here where we've expanded the cuspids and uh, show you some long-term things where we've uh, watched some of these cases for years. Uh, this particular case now we will come in and move these cuspids back, just distalize them, and we are able to line the lower four anterior teeth up without any real problem. Uh, and When this research was done, it said you couldn't line these up. That it didn't matter whether you extracted teeth or didn't extract teeth. Uh, we found if you expand the cuspids and bring the roots distal with the crowns, that this is much more stable. So we, uh, we'll go through this case right here. This is an older lady. Uh, I say older. She's just in her 50s. Uh, or close to 50. Very nice lady. Got a good facial height and everything is good. And when we look at her models and see how the teeth are, it's a rather unusual case in that the right side of the mouth is just nearly a perfect class one relation. This is just you couldn't actually do this better if you orthodontically had treated this lady. But uh, we're going to show the other side of the mouth that is exactly opposite. It's a complete class two. It's a rather unique uh, case. It's perfect class two on one side, perfect class one on the other side. And we did a, we do another thing which a lot of people uh, think is not you're not able to do, but it it can be done, and I want to show that on this case also where we're going to actually back up this whole side of the maxilla, this whole left side of it, into and bring it back into a class one relation. In other words. This bicuspid will end up right down in this spot, and this one right here, and the cuspid will come back to here, and you take this whole thing back. I actually didn't show the mechanics of doing this on this case, but uh, you can see the right off we didn't take any pictures right at first. But uh, it was such an interesting case, I want to show you that we expanded the lower cuspids also. So here's the 
lower situation so we're going to bring these teeth back far enough to where we can line up the anterior teeth and we have to hold this side in class one while we bring the other side back in there so let me go through this again uh, here all right we have actually done this already in the case and uh, if you notice we've got some little hooks up here where we probably had to use some class 2 elastics as we brought this around and then the midline if this is class 2 the midline is going to be off so we were bringing it across this way and here we did this with nothing but some rubber bands and a person that would cooperate good and we wore double class 2 on the right side this was very little class 2 over here on this side or very little class 2 mechanics I want to say so this side now is back and the cusp is back in this position and this is 4 of 7, uh, 87 and I think we started just a few months before that to, to do this case a very interesting and we watched this lady for a long time and finally after several years she got tired of coming in so I haven't seen her for a long time but I'm sure this is still in this position all right it's lined up now and these cuspids are back but we didn't just tilt the crowns back the cuspids are brought back bodily you see and uh, this is held and it's stable and this is still 87 it's not a long time yet here it is a little later we're about to finish the case up I used some springs on her at one time just I felt sorry for having to wear these rubber bands all the time hooking them up so I tied these on but it wasn't necessary to do that and I came back and just took them off and finished finished it up and you have to hold it back in class one for quite a while before you turn a case like this loose and that's just the rubber band so here we are it's fitting back in their position quite well at this point. So we're really ready to take it off and we took the all of the braces off except the lower anterior teeth. Now today I, I don't take anything off the bottom until I have it finished and I have the three to three or the retainer that we use uh, over the bottom arch in place so again the other side we held in its class one just like it was to start with but there was some difference in the arch form and there's the lower arch after we moved it back and lined those teeth up got a little die steamer there in the upper so here it's 89 so we finished her up it's it's been out of treatment now a year or two I forget just exactly but it's held good again that's 88 another 88 picture now we put her upper retainer in with a bite plate and let the lower anterior teeth close into this area up here and uh, she wears this very good the excellent patient and the bottom is holding quite well now here it's 89 again everything is off and the expansion we had a little reduction of the gingival tissue in this area probably this tooth needs to be torqued in a little bit more but uh, this will get a little better as we go along here again 1989 and this is 1991 
she's wearing this retainer real good you can see she's got a track in her mouth you really need to take them out and leave them a little while during the day or night sometimes so the tissue needs to be in the open and get a little more exercise and doesn't get inflamed like that so that's again 89 is holding there's 91 and those teeth are still there you can tell this tooth is not torqued have the root torqued in quite as much as these others uh, right in here so we've got a little gingival stripping out there on the on that uh, right central 91 all right here she is in 1996 this is healed some but it's still a little inflamed on that particular tooth and if I'd have just torqued the root of that tooth in better this would probably be more look more like these other teeth on the sides of it but this is several years now out of treatment and it's holding good the midline is shifted back just slightly you can see uh, she religiously wears her retainer and everything's staying good but she should take it out a little more massage the gum tissue up there 96 96 It's, this is a side that we move the whole thing back in one time the whole distance of the class two and that can be done without separating and moving the teeth one at a time back so I'm a big uh, advocate for group movement of teeth and she's sure wearing the retainer a lot but it's holding 96. Let's see if we can. All right, here's 2002. And uh, the right side, of course, is class one. It still is. The anterior shifted just slightly, the midline slightly off. The tissue on this tooth looks better now than it did, but she got a little gingival problem right there. And that could have been avoided if I had torqued that tooth in a little bit. So it's just uh, uh, something we ought to think about before we finish the treatment of somebody. And here's the, I'm going to show the models when we started. The bite was deeper on the side. It was class two, of course. And the lower anterior teeth fit up underneath there like that midline was quite a ways off and the here that side of the tooth is in 2002 it slipped just slightly see you like that cusp in there at this point coming down a little further this could be back just slightly further so the class 2 side has slipped back if just a small amount during this period from 87 we finished it probably in 88 or 89 and here it is 2002 the general tissue looks good no problems with these teeth that we moved back when we look at the models now you can see laying right across here we took this segment back till we get this point back where it's lined up with the other point over here now people don't think that you can just slide this back on adults they have to go slipping each tooth back or push some special gadget they put in the mouth to distalize the molars and then distalize the bias and then bring the anterior tooth back 
and I don't find that necessary at all. I've never done it, and we've packed some tremendously, some tremendous amount of collisions up like that. So, anyway, I don't advocate this uh, distalizing molars with these devices that people come up with. You can do it, but it's not necessary to do that. All right. Here we are, the lower anterior is still holding up at 2002, and I was unable to get any pictures on this lady after that. I don't know that she moved or something happened. I never saw her, I don't think, after 2002. But here was the lower anterior teeth, and there's where they are in 2002. And that is not trying to crawl back up on us. Now, I don't have any retention in there right now, but uh, we always bond something on the teeth to maintain them and try to keep them there better. And I must have had some type of retainer on there at one time. But this is holding and it's stable. And there's where it was. In the upper. Now we wear this upper retainer when she wore it and the lower anteriors fit in this little groove right up here. And uh, she wore that religiously and those teeth stayed in there. So this spike plate that we have served kind of as a retainer for her, for her lower anterior teeth. Oh, and there, there we've got the, I had a little removable retainer that she wore some. Now, I don't like these things and uh, they can be lost or swallowed or various things. So now we bond a three to three in here on all these cases and uh, I don't use those anymore. We just go ahead and bond all those teeth together. And here she is, 91 and that's 2000 something, 91. Okay, here's 2002, and uh, this is still holding. So I'm going to recommend the expansion of lower anterior teeth, lower anterior cuspids primarily, uh, and just be sure you bring the roots distal with the crowns. That's 91 and 2002. Now we'll show the x rays where we actually open the bite and then slide this back. But you got to open the bite first. Now don't try to slide it back with the bite closed. And you can let it close back down later on if you want to. And there it is back. After we first did it, the bone structure looks virtually the same. There's very little difference in there. And here it is again. It's holding back. That's 98 and 91. And uh, as far as the TMJ problem, we had no problem with our TMJ at all. Everything went all fine on that. Now the teeth look expanded an awful lot. The lower anteriors are laying out there, but this is a stable case. It's been that way. Now that was 1998. And that's the last pictures I've got on that lady. We have another case here that I want to go through. And uh, this lady worked for me for years and uh, very sharp. She had a breathing problem when she was, well, she had still had it, you know. And uh, this, she had a lower jaw that was, uh, just had not moved out or grown out where it should be. Uh, and it was related to her, 
her airway function and everything, and we separated the palate on this lady. She was 32 years old when we did that, and it gave her a lot of relief breathing, said she could breathe much better after wearing that. There's several things about this case that are good, and we expanded her lower anterior teeth. I'm going to show you what we use to do the expansion, and I don't recommend that. You can do it a lot easier. Uh, now here's the, it's looking at the teeth clinically. The midline's way off. The mind is closed. The lower anterior teeth are crowded. So there's this problems all in, in here. So we're going to expand the the palate. We'll just bring this out. And this lady was working there in the office. We did this case in about 11 months. And she said, she wanted out of these quicker than we wanted to, but we let her do that. And we'll follow her for years. In fact, I still hope to get some pictures of her later on here in 2015. Okay, this is 1988. The right side of the mouth was in class one. It's just fitting in there good. Now this case has got a whole lot of things stacked in it. Uh, she's got a TMJ problem in addition to that. Now we'll look at the uh, upper arch where we're going to put a, a palatal separator in there. And we also used the springs between the anterior teeth on a sliding arch. So we had some pressure up here to bring these teeth teeth apart and after putting this in and cranking it open in a little over two weeks she said she could breathe much much better so we that is a very important thing about palatal separation we always band all the teeth that are on this I don't band this one but we run a bar back to bring it out and you bring the roots of these teeth out as you bring the crowns out in there. That increases the airway. And uh, she could breathe good after we separated this palate at age 32. And this is said to be a no-no, but we've, we've separated numerous people up in their 30s and just a few in their early 40s. After that... Uh, if they've not had any success. We can expand the arch, though. So we need the people in their 50s, 60s, and even in their 80s. All right, this is 1988. We've got a crowded situation down here, and she's got a little periodontal problems in addition to that. So it's just, it's just a stack of problems that you've got with cases, and Nearly all of them will have more than one thing you're uh, going at, you see, or need to correct. All right, so we used a, what we call a big daddy arch or super big daddy arch. And we, uh, you know, this wire going around and it comes back here. And this part will stick out here. And we pulled it in and tied it to these teeth here. So we were able to bring this out. And you can... See, now I don't recommend this. You can actually just put a big daddy arch in there and form it where it's out away from these teeth and you tie the teeth to it. You don't need, this is more complicated than that. So it's simpler just to put a, a big daddy arch over and have it built where the, there's space in between these teeth and you just bring them out to the wire itself. All right, here's the palatal separator in her mouth, and we cranked it apart like this, and she said she could feel the expansion or her breathing change right in two to three weeks after we put this on and got this cranked out. Now, we hold it in there for months or several months while the roots of the teeth 
some out with the crowns over here. We want the expansion all the way up into the airway. So here that uh, super big daddy arch wire is. And we push those arms in, you see, to bring the other teeth out. And it's just tied on back in here. And these arms would be out here, you see. So we bring that in and pull these teeth out to the arch wire there. Or this, expand them to that point. And you have to put a, some torque in your rectangular wire to get the roots out. So here's 1989. And you can see the expansion that we got here. And these teeth were crowded. We got space between them now, lining them all up like this open the bite. We actually put her in a split for a while before we start to bring the jaw forward a little bit to help the class, uh, the TMJ problem. Now the midline is off so we haven't really got this all the way out. Uh, it's not all the way corrected all the way back here. But here is the big daddy arch bar in there and we've expanded these teeth and we'll have to work with them now bring the roots back to the crowns and this holds up now there it is tied in to the arch wire you tie it to your regular arch wire and that bring, it'll bring these teeth out till they run into this main part of the big daddy wire so you have to make this to where it's out away from these cuspids and bicuspids or whatever you want to expand. So you really don't need this arm. You can just tie your arch wire to that if you tie it tight enough and it'll bring the teeth out to where they touch the main body, main body of this uh, big daddy arch wire. So I don't teach Try to get people using that particular thing, but it works. Now, in this case, we had a, she didn't want to see the teeth down here, so we dropped the brackets down real low on the lower anterior teeth and kept the arch wire going here, and then you drop the bracket. The thing you want is the occlusal surface of the teeth to be all in a line, you see. You can put the bracket anywhere you want to in there. So in adults, you can lower the bracket. You can even lower these and come off the molar and drop it down if you wanted to. Just keep the incisal edge of the teeth lined up like that. That's pretty uh, compli gets more complicated, but you can do that. Uh, now we've taken her out, and this was only 11 months, and so she came out too quick before we had this. Uh, this side was, we advanced the mandible, so we had to wear some class 3 elastics over here to bring this back, and she didn't wear that long enough, so we got a slight relapse on this case after some time. Now she did wear her upper retainer. She's been very good at that. The midline is slightly off, but that's not a big problem. But it's lined up like that in 1989. That was only 11 months after we started the case. And I didn't, <coughs> I recommend that treating them longer than that. Okay. She made herself a, one of these crazy retainers. Uh, we came up with this different colors of acrylic and people that was popular back there. Now if a person has a short jaw and they bring their jaw forward or postured forward, it just changes the appearance of the person tremendously. She's a good looking lady and there's some other things happened in here. She had too much vertical lower vertical facial height. But a person that has too much facial height, rather than close your t lips together, if you just smile or keep your mouth open slightly or your lips open, uh, you 
can mask that increased vertical height problem. And then over a period of years, we got her breathing right. You'll have to notice that the vertical height of the face came down some. Now this is something I had not known, but I looked at these pictures later on, and uh, she's a beautiful gal this way, but if you brought her jaw back, she you saw how she looked when we started. Now she's out, the teeth are open, and we're fitting like that again. Now, she's a smoker, and I really don't like that. And it's hard on the general tissue. And she, she moved to Atlanta and, and actually worked in a pedodontist office in Atlanta and, and helped her with her orthodontics. Uh, uh, this lady knew orthodontics, uh, I'm sure, better than, than the lady that she was working for. Uh, she's a sharp gal. Now we had a bite plate, you'll notice, on the upper retainer. It fits in there. It has a track for these lower anterior teeth. And that helps hold them in position as long as they stay with the upper retainer, you see. Now she's wearing the thing, and uh, a little too much. You need to take them out a certain time during the day and massage your gums up there real good. You got a little information. Uh, now this is 1988, that was when it was class 2 on uh, the left side of the mouth, well, class 1 over here. Now we advanced this case with a split, this made pull the class 2 side into, but it made this side class 3, and that's where you had to come in and wear class 3 elastics to correct that. She didn't wear that enough, so she got some relapse. Now you've got a little gingival pockets in here. She had periodontal trouble, but she takes care of her teeth very good today, and she's doing well. But right here it is in 92, and the uh, this is the side you had to wear class 3 elastics to finish. The retainer looks good and everything's fitting in there. There's 1988, and that was the anterior in 88. There's, just looking at the occlusal surface. And here, you see she is pretty she was when she was smiling, but when she closes completely too, there's too much facial height in this lower third of the face. Now, we have followed this lady for a long time, and this facial height in here has reduced. In other words, if you get a high ankle case and you get them functioning correctly over a long period, the time the vertical height of the lower third of the face reduces and this is something that I don't have any proof for all this but this actually happens and I've noticed it on several cases now this is uh, I don't can't see that date uh, that's before we got in there it was crowded like that here we're going to bring this portion back and this one forward to class one. And there's that. We go back into some clinical stuff here for a few minutes. And there's that arch wire that we used. That's the space. We expanded it that much from there to that. Now that was an 040 stainless steel wire that we did that expansion in. Now here the midline's on before we, which I don't worry about midline's all that much, you can have a two side discrepancy. Now we bonded these lower teeth together and kept that 
for years. There's a bite plate over there. Now here's where her jaw, she had a retrognathic mandible, but we postured her forward and then separated the palate and uh, whoop, let me go back. Now you can see the difference in the way the person looks. Now this is after, this is a good bit of years later, there's some relapse over on this side where she didn't stay in there long enough. The other side is correct. This is 1990. This was the 1989. That's where we had this big daddy arch fire in there. She had some genital bone loss too at this time. She had some periodontal problems when we started and she takes care of her teeth real well now and so she's still there. While she was in Atlanta she had a graft put on the lower end of her teeth. 92, you see it slipped partially. She's not keeping her scale good enough. She is, this is 97. She's got a lot of juniorization and reduction in the teeth up here. And she'll have to have those filled in. She must, some question is what, whether that comes from excessive brushing or whatever, but I have that too. And and uh, I have some places that are deeper than that that I had them filled. Of course, I'm a lot older than she is. <laughs> and this has got the midline is off, but it still looks good. This is 97, apparently. 97, that's not a good picture here, but. Okay, this is the end of our second phase of expanding lower cuspids. And I hope if you haven't tried this, go ahead and try it. It's, it works good. So I'm going to close this out now. And uh, hope that you will learn how to expand lower cuspids and line the 